Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing today? Welcome to another amazing time in the presence of God. I'm excited to be here and I'm sure that you are. Welcome again to Fusion. This is a time when we spend together in the presence of God. And we're going to learn, we're going to enjoy ourselves and have fun together today. Uh, we've been on this Christmas um, series and we've done two weeks. This is another amazing week. Last week, we looked at the topic, been there, done that. And today, we're going to be looking at another wonderful, wonderful, interesting um, topic. But let me not let the cat out of the bag yet. When we pray and we're going to a session of praise and worship, then we'll come back and we'll go straight into the Word of God. Okay, so if you're excited, I am and I'm ready to go. But before we do that, I think we should pray. Yes, don't you think we should? I think we should. So can we um, close our eyes and commit ourselves unto God this morning as we go into the Word of God? So let's pray. Father, we thank you. We give you praise for another amazing time in your presence. We thank you for the opportunity to learn at your feet. And we ask that as we come to learn at your feet, let your word find a place in our heart. Let your word find good soil in our heart. And let your word produce the fruit that it should produce in our life. That we will become better people even for listening to your word today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And somebody say amen. Amen. Do you feel good already? Wow. So we should thank God for this season. We should thank God for everything he's done for us. And to do that, we're going to be going into an amazing session of praise and worship. Woo! Are you ready to give him praise? Are you ready to rejoice in the presence of God? Right. Good. So let's go enjoy ourselves, praise him, worship him. And then when we come back, we'll go straight into the word of God. See you soon.
Wow, what an amazing time of praise and worship. I enjoyed myself. Hope you did too. Of course, you should. Right? I, I was it. I was it. Tell me, tell me. Did you dance? All right, good. So, we'll be going straight into the Word of God today. And like I said, we have been on this Christmas series and we've looked at two topics. And today we're going to be looking at this topic. And the topic is, drum rolls, there is more to the story. What story? There is more to the story of Christmas. Yes, there is more to that story. So we want to look at it. What is more to the story of Christmas? Now, I know that this season is always a season where we enjoy ourselves, we have fun, we celebrate, and of course, we watch movies. And of course, there are so many movies that have been created about the story of Christmas, you know? Can you tell me some? All right, tell me some of them. Good. Now, you have stories like all the, um, Jingle All the Way. You have stories like um, the movies like Home Alone. We have so many stories or movies that have been created about the Christmas story. But let me ask you a question. Which of this movie? Uh, what's your favorite, um, favorite Christmas movie? What's your favorite Christmas movie? Think about that. Think about what your favorite Christmas movie is and why do you love it? Why do you enjoy it so much? Think about that for a minute. For a minute. But the truth is that beyond all these Christmas movies, beyond all the stories that we've heard about Christmas in this movie, there is more to the story of Christmas. There is more to the story of Christmas. You know, there are so many things that are signify or they are used to signify the celebration of Christmas. We have the elf. Of course, everybody knows about the Santa Claus. Santa Claus from the North Pole and all of that. We have the snowfall and all of that. We have the snare. We have the flying deer. We have the gift and all of that about the Christmas story. But is that all about the Christmas story? Is the Christmas story all about the cheer? All about the happy endings? Okay, but let's go into it. What does the Bible say about the Christmas story? That's what we want to look at today. What does the Bible say about the Christmas story? The truth is that when we watch all this movie, it is so easy to lose focus about the intent and the important part of what the Christmas story is about. And that is why we want to look at it today. If you look at the Bible in the book of Luke from chapter, um, chapter 2, from verse 1 to 20, the, the scripture talks about the story of a Christmas, the story behind the Christmas. It's a long reading, so I won't be reading everything, but I will be giving a summary of the, the verses in this chapter. Are you ready to go into the Word of God with me? Okay. Now, if we look at the chapter, um, the verse 1 of chapter 2 of the book of Luke, we see that in the, there was a time when um, there was a censor going on in um, Jerusalem. And Joseph and Mary, okay, the, the earthly father of, of Jesus and the mother of Jesus, were part of those going for the censor. And fortunately, or should we say unfortunately? Yeah, fortunately, that was the same period that Mary wanted to give birth to Jesus. So Mary was at the point of giving birth to Jesus. And they went around looking for a guest room, a place that could contain them. And unfortunately, there was no place for them. There was no room for them. The only place that was left for them where they could actually give birth to Jesus was in the manger. That's the story of Christmas, was in the manger. And again, they gave birth to Jesus in that manger among the lamb, among the sheep, and it was wrapped in swaddling clothes. That's what the scripture says. And then furthermore, if you look at the, 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 the eighth um, verse of that same chapter, the Bible says that there were some shepherds in the outskirts of the, of the city. They were watching their lamb, and then suddenly an angel appeared to them and told them the good news that Jesus was born. He told them that good news, and at the same time, a, a, a choir of, of angels gathered and sang, talking about the good news of the birth of Jesus Christ, even at, um, to, the, to the shepherd. The question is, why was it not a throne that Jesus was giving birth to at? Why was it in the manger? Why was it in the manger? Why did the, why the, um, the angel choose to appear to the shepherd. In those days, the shepherds were looked down upon. They were in the outskirts of the city. They were not the 
top of the ladder when we talk about the best of occupation. They were at the bottom of the ladder. But the angel decided or chose to speak to this shepherd. So why was it, what was it the shepherd that were, they were, pick, uh, were picked on uh, to, to receive this message? So we want to look at all of this and consider the important aspect of um, the story of Christmas. So before we go into all that, I want us to think again. What's your favorite Christmas movie? And why do you think you love that movie so much? Now, the question is, does this movie focus on the birth of Jesus Christ? Or is it just focusing on the other aspects of the celebration? You know, in today's world, we talk about a lot of celebration. And it's so easy, like I said, to miss the important detail of what the story of Christmas is about. Now, do you know any Christmas movie that actually talked about the birth of Jesus? Do you know any Christmas movie that actually focused the attention on the birth of Jesus? Now, what we are saying is not that we are not, we are not saying that Christmas movies are bad or they are wrong. But what we are saying is that we should not lose focus of what the intent and the purpose of this season is for every one of us. We should not lose focus of the important message that Christmas is passing across to us. It is so easy to lose focus based on the stories of these movies that we watch and we think that Christmas is all about the celebration. It's all about, it's all about the Nigerian jollof or it's all about the parties, all about the movies and all of that. But it is much more than that. There is more to the story of Christmas. It is important that we dig into the true meaning of Christmas. What is the true meaning of Christmas? What is important and what is meaningful to us about the real Christmas story? As we see in the scripture, God chose a place of birth for Jesus Christ and it was the manger. God chose the first witness of the story of Christmas about the message of Christmas and they were the shepherd, the ones that were looked down upon. The question is, what is one thing that you have always believed about Christmas, but you have not actually seen it in the story. That's in the book of Luke, chapter 2, from verse 1 to 20. You know, I did not see any Santa Claus in that story, did I? No. I did not see any elf. I did not see any flying deer and all of that. And that is what we have seen surrounding the story of Christmas. So what is that one thing that you believed, that you once um, held dear about the story of Christmas, but you cannot find it in this scripture. Now, the question is, why did God choose the manger, not the throne, for the birth of Jesus Christ? Now, Jesus came in the very humble place to come and save us. The true story of Christmas is just talking about the fact that Jesus came for everyone. If Jesus were give, was given birth to um, in the palace, for example, it is easy to think that, oh, Jesus only came for the rich or for the wealthy. But Jesus came in a very low estate. He was born in the manger to show us that he came for everyone, no matter your circumstance, you know, no matter your status, no matter your social class, he came for every one of us. Jesus came for every one of us. And that is the story, the real story of Christmas, that we were given a Savior. A Savior, Jesus was born to save us, to bring us back into relationship with God the Father. Jesus, um, the Bible also said that in the verse 8 of Luke 2, okay, the Bible said that the first witness about the message of Christmas were the shepherd. The shepherd in those days were considered as the low-class people, but yet God chose them as the people that would be the first, first witness about the story of Christmas. To tell us again that Jesus came to everyone. He came to save every single one of us. No matter your status, no matter your social class, He came for you. Jesus came to save the world. Now, what does it mean to you that God chose to enter the world in this humble state? In this place and in this time, what can we consider, or where, what, what can we consider as the shepherds of today in our modern world? 
who can we consider as the people that are in their low place? And if you were the shepherd, what would be your response? What would be your response when you receive that message? Because that is the essence of the Christmas season. It's for us to tell the world, to share the message, to tell the world about the good news that a Savior was born and he was born for every one of us. It is time for us to celebrate with the low people and tell them, those people that are out of the family of God, those people that are not yet known God or not yet known Christ, to tell them about the message behind the Christmas story, that there is more to this story than the celebration. And what is it to this story? That a Savior was born to save every one of us. A Savior was born to save every one of us. We should not forget that. As we celebrate, as we jubilate, as we go to the movies, please don't forget this important message. That is the real story of Christmas, that a Savior was born to save every one of us. But don't just know it to yourself. Be like the shepherd. Go out there and tell somebody about it. Tell somebody about the story, the real story behind Christmas. Tell somebody about the good news of Jesus Christ. Tell somebody about the love of Jesus Christ. Tell somebody about the fact that no matter what they have done, where they have been, what they have been, or what, where, where they have been, that God still loves them. And he gave his only begotten son that, he may, he, that we may be saved. That we may be saved. I want to read something from you, from a quote from J.I. Packer. It says, The Almighty appeared on earth as a helpless human baby, needing to be fed and changed, and taught to talk like any other child. It came just like any other child. The more you think about it, the more struggling it gets. Nothing is in fiction is so fantastic as the truth of this incarnation. Nothing in, fic in fiction is so fantastic as the truth of this incarnation. There is something much more than the fiction stories that we watch or the fiction stories that we've read. But there is much, what is much more is the fact that Jesus came as low, as humble as it could be to save us and to bring us into that relationship with God the Father. This is the true story of Christmas. And this is what we want you to remember. And let us quickly read again. In that book of Luke from chapter 2, I want to read from verse 10 and 12. Verse 10 to 12. And I want you to put it in our mind and think about it, meditate about it. Throughout this Christmas season, let it be your watchword. The Bible says in verse 10, But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. So that is the good news about Christmas. That is the story behind the Christmas. That is the story. Jesus is the reason for the season. It is not about Xmas. It is about Christmas, the celebration of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and tell somebody about it today. Tell somebody about it today. And think about it. What will you do differently this Christmas? What will be your watch for this Christmas? How would you celebrate this Christmas to express the true meaning behind the story of Christmas? The importance of this message, the importance of the season is that a Savior was born to save us, who is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. God bless you. I hope you've learned something today. And I hope that you will go ahead and tell the world about the love of Jesus because that is the reason for the season. He is the reason for the season. So we need to pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray as we go ahead to celebrate this season. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the gift of Jesus. We thank you for the season. And we thank you because of the reason behind the season, which is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We thank you because we, we know that Jesus was born because of us. He was born for every one of us. And that is the good news. That is the good news that we celebrate this season. We celebrate you, we thank you, and we love you. We ask, O oh God, that as we go into this celebration season, give us the grace to do it according to your will. Give us the grace to do it in the way that pleases you. Give us the grace 
to be able to share this good news even with others that are around us, even uh, that are outside the family of Christ right now. Thank you, Jesus, because we know we receive the grace. We worship you, we adore you, and we love you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. Until next time, we'll see you again. I want us to think about this and celebrate Christmas differently this time and this year. Not like you've celebrated last year, but differently this year with this message in mind. It is the more to the story of Christmas. Thank you and God bless you. See you next time and of course, enjoy your week. Before we go, let's say our every Sunday confession. It shouldn't be every Sunday confession. It should be our daily confession. Every day you wake up, you tell yourself, I am blessed. Praise God. I am prosperous. I am talented. I am creative. I am forgiven. I am redeemed. I am free. Say, I am valuable. I am anointed. Amen. I am equipped. God has equipped us. Amen. I am beautiful. Say that to yourself. I am beautiful. Amen. You are beautiful in Jesus' name. Say, I am attractive. Made you attractive in Jesus' name. I am amazing. I love this one. I am amazing. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Child of God, say it like you mean it. I am a child of the Most High God. Praise the name of the Lord. I have seeds of greatness. I have seeds of greatness on the inside of me. I'll become all he has created me to be. I will become all God has created me to be in the mighty name of Jesus. I am victorious. We are victorious in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a victorious week, my friends, in Jesus' name. God bless you and keep you. God make his face shine over you and give you peace in the name of Jesus. You will excel in this life in the name of Jesus. You shall be called blessed. Blessed are you in your going out. Blessed are you in your coming in in the name of Jesus. You will know the truth and the Bible says if you know the truth, the truth shall set you free. You are free indeed in the name of Jesus. No weapon fashion form against you shall prosper in the name of Jesus. The heart of God rest upon you. Uh, you shall flourish like cedar in Lebanon in the name of Jesus. Your life will not be cut short. You will live to fulfill your days and your assignment Amen in this life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for answering our prayers. I pray all this over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone say, Amen. God bless you, real girl. Mm -hmm.